What YouTube, what's up guys? So I just got home from work right now. I am on my lunch break. I'm not gonna lie, I'm exhausted. I was up editing last night's video until 12.30 a.m. So I didn't go to bed until two. I'm working until 7 p.m. today. And because of that, because I came to work a little later today, I'm gonna go ahead and honestly just take a nap right now. There's a lot I have to get done at work today. We need to get something done by the end of this week. And for me to be able to do that, I gotta make sure I'm awake, man. So sorry about that. I'm so out of it right now. Let's go. Oh my gosh, that nap it helped a little bit. I'm exhausted. I guess I'll catch up on sleep later tonight after church, but, and this is pretty much literally what I do on all my lunch breaks. I come to lunch, watch Netflix. So let's get my food right now. All right guys, so I'm back in my room right now. I'm watching Net Limitless on Netflix right now, but let me show you my lunch. This is what I made. So this is called Sinigang. This is a Filipino dish, all vegetable, green beans, spinach, tomatoes uh, and a bunch of radishes right here i love radish and I, I eat this pretty much like three times a week this with rice a bunch of vegetables it only takes about 40 minutes to make and fun fact sinigang is actually one of my favorite food ever that's why i asked my mom to teach me how to make it i'm learning to make much more vegetable filipino healthy dishes than i could eat as i'm on this really change of a lifestyle but anyways man i want to eat this food before i go back to work i have to be back to work in 15 minutes so let me eat this real quick and i'll see you guys when i'm done eating Alright guys, I just finished eating. Time to go back to the office and finally talk to you guys about code. All right, guys, what's up, everyone? So I am here at work, but but anyway, so uh, there is something that I do want to talk to you guys about. I can't believe it, but I'm actually about to hit my three-year mark as a developer, which is insane. When I look back to the last three years of really how my life has been, the hardships I've gone through, not only as a developer, but even throughout life, and I remember just wondering how it would be to reach that three-year mark. I've learned a lot, and so what I want to do with you guys today is I want to talk to you guys about really the steps of what a developer goes through. So at least what I did. Hopefully this is something that you can see what you will face within your first three years as a developer because the minimum requirement to get a job is often three years and so I'm hitting that mark and so does that minimum requirement really make sense sometimes and so I would do want to talk about this right now. Let's just let's just get I, I'm get, right, I need to stop talking. Let's go. So yeah when I first went to this industry uh, I had no idea what I was getting into. I had no idea what I'd have to learn or what I would have to persevere through but I had a lot of assumptions of how I thought developer life a developer life would be for example one thing I didn't realize is how hard it would be or how long it could potentially take to really grow in this industry and it's a lot harder than people might realize so like when you get in the industry sometimes you might think growing as developer is just by learning a few simple languages taking tutorials and learning as many tutorials as possible I think sometimes people might think just getting a degree will make you good at programming it's not that at all. One thing that I've learned that will make you very valuable and really grow in this industry, it's really pushing yourself, diving deep in and creating things that you aren't able to do. Because the only way you're able to do what you can't do is by trying to do what you can't do. By, try, by you trying to do what you can't do will help you do it. Because then you'll find out why can't you do it? What do you need to do that well? What do you need to get the job done? One thing I've really learned about myself is that I have to be able and willing to push myself a lot at work. Uh, even more more than that though, one thing that I did not do and I just realized I'm bad at it is asking good questions. Asking not just good questions, but also asking the, the correct questions in the right way. Because one thing I've noticed is that I'll ask questions, but I wouldn't explain exactly what it is that I'm asking. <laughs> I would ask a question assuming they know what I'm talking about, you know what I mean? But that's honestly how I am, and that's me. I kind of think way too fast, and oftentimes, at least for me, and so something about myself is that I, I need to learn to ask better questions at the right time, right when I need it. Don't be afraid to ask. Because you don't know it does not mean you're bad, but the fact you're asking the question in a correct way and asking it well even shows more than you not asking anything to but of course you still have to try to solve the problem all right guys so i just got home i'm just gonna go ahead and take in the trash really really quick okay so give me one second okay anyway so another thing i've learned since getting a job as a developer um, and working for at least two companies as of now, right? Coding, yes, I went into it because, yeah, I, I did love it, but I originally did it for the money, and the money's freaking great. <laughs> oh, dang. 
But even more than that, more than finding a job that will pay you the most money, which is really important, right? But if you could find a job that could pay you a good pay, but even more than that, have a great culture and a great boss that you can work with, there's like nothing compares to that. Like for example, I was actually talking to the new front end developer. Technically, she's kind of like a full stack developer. She's pretty good. Uh, I was talking to her for like an hour today after everyone left. And we're talking about how compared to our last company, I'm not talking bad about my last company, but the culture we have here at Entrepreneur is just so different. I mean, our boss is so chill. Uh, asking, re requesting for a day off is so easy. Uh, you know, if I get sick and I do get sick, it's not like they ask for a doctor note, you know. And for example, I'm not feeling well. It's not like they, they talk to me like they don't believe me, but they treat you so well here at Entrepreneur. It, it's amazing. I don't know about other departments. I don't, but at least under my department, the development design department, you know, my, the managers above me, even the CEO works in my building, which is pretty cool. He's so chill. Like the CEO, like he'll at 4 p.m. every single day when he's here, he'll literally be gaming on the Xbox right behind us while we're coding. And we'll watch him, we'll talk to him about games. It's so cool and everyone's a gamer here. But the culture at this company is so amazing. And I was talking to the other developer and we're talking about how like, this culture alone, the culture is so amazing. And the, the thought of just leaving after working for a great company is honestly terrifying. And so, more than just the pay, I think one of our main priorities as a developer is to find a good job. Where number one, you can find good work-life balance. Number two, you feel trusted and valued. Number three, a place that you're happy at. And I can honestly say I found that company, which not a lot of people can honestly say. So, I think as a developer, one thing I've learned is finding that right company, not just the pay, is important because I know people who worked in the weekends, who worked 80 hour weeks and are not happy even though they get paid more than me. And I don't want that to be me, right? Actually, but you guys haven't really seen the other parts of my house, so let me show you that really quick. Uh, I'm not gonna talk too much, but I just wanna show you real quick. All right, let's go. This is like the kitchen, which is pretty sick. I cook in this kitchen, like I think pretty much every single day. Pretty nice, I cook here all the time. Um, here's the dining table. People can eat and talk and chill here. And this is the living room. TV right over there. That's the living room and yeah. But anyway, let's go upstairs. What is up room? Nice to see you. <laughs> All right guys, so I actually knocked out last night so I couldn't finish filming. It's about 6 a.m. I'm going to work at 7 a.m. today. So let me just eat my breakfast super quick and I'll see you guys when we get out of the house, all right? See you guys in a little bit. All right guys, what's up everyone? So I just got here to the office. As you can tell, there's no other cars here, just mine right now. Uh, I came here early today because there's a lot of things I need to kind of catch up on and just finish. I want to get it done early. So let me go inside real quick and I'll talk to you guys in a second. As you can tell, there's literally no one in right now. There's just one person right now who's in the corner office. He's usually in at 7 a.m. every single day. So yeah, give me one second. Oh my gosh, it's time. Call me wide-eyed, simple-minded. I've been blinded. I'm on a merry-go-round. All right, there you go. Now you guys can see me. So I know it's kind of been a while since I've shown you my setup here in the office because I don't really film in the office since since I live pretty close to work. This is what my setup looks like at work. So I still have my keyless or fontless HHKB Pro 2 Happy Hacking Keyboard. I love this. Uh, what I do work when I work on my Mac is I do use the black trackpad too, which is pretty sick, dude. I love it a lot. Still have my normal fan. This is still my setup here at work. But yeah, in case you're wondering, man, yeah, it, it, it's been great. I'm working here like um, I said earlier in the video we picked up a new developer front end developer technically engineer but she's actually really good she sits next to me Jesse sits one row down there other developer is here seeing the developers back there so yeah man it's been pretty cool actually I haven't shown you guys this but check this out so literally we're like right next to the freeway and as you can see I'm not sure if you can because of the glare I'm trying to fix that but we're right next to the freeway right here which is pretty cool Okay, so, well, another thing that I've I've learned, I think one thing to understand and accept is that there will always be people out there that are better than you. And you also just have to understand that that's how it is because, I mean, how large is the industry? How long have been people coding, right? And I'll tell you this, I am much better now, way better now than when I first started, but I still feel like I don't know much at all, man. And if you were to ask my friends at church or if you were to ask my girlfriend, um, I'm really, really hard on myself, like very often. I get hard on myself easily. But one thing I had to recently, like very recently, just understand that 
there's just a lot of people better than me. They've been working longer. What I just need to understand is that that's just normal. Now the question at the end of the day is like, what am I willing to do to get better? How hard am I willing to work outside of work on my own to improve, to become a, a really good full stack developer, learn PHP, and be able to write code in ways that you never thought would be possible or things that would be impossible to you can be possible. So I think that's one thing that I just learned to accept after the last three years that, because I tell you this, I've worked with many people who are way better than me. And sometimes it, it just hits me in the head like, how the heck are they so good and I'm not? Like, what is it that I suck in? <laughs> what is it that I lack in so much? And so, that's one thing I had to accept. All right, guys. <laughs> it is about 2 a.m. right now. It is really late. I actually didn't get to finish the last clip of this video. And to be honest, the one last point I wanted to talk about, I'm gonna save for tomorrow's video. And the reason I really wanna do that is because this video is already about 10 minutes, 30 seconds long, and I don't want to make the video like 14 minutes. That's way too long, so I'm gonna end the video here. <laughs> I hope you guys like this. I've honestly learned so much. Within my first three years as a developer, it's been an amazing journey, uh, and there's so much more I need to learn, but one thing I'm very thankful is for the fact that after coding for three years, I still love what I do. For me, I'm the kind of person where I get bored of things really, really easy. Like, I'll upload a lot of videos in a week, and then sometimes I won't upload a video for two weeks. But coding is something that I've still enjoyed consistently every day for the last three years, which I'm very thankful for because that also within itself shows that I have found my love, my passion, which is coding. But anyways, guys, I'm gonna end the video here. Uh, I just ask, man, if you liked any of the points, if, you, if you've been coding for a couple years, what's one thing that you've learned that I haven't even touched yet in this video? But anyways, thank you guys for watching. This is Krishan. This is Life of a Developer, and I'm exhausted. It's 2 a.m. and I have to go to work at 7 a.m. tomorrow. I'm out. Good night and peace.